have a big menu collection, but the first item in any collection is always a special one. For mine, it's from the Lotus Room in Denver, Colorado in the 1950s. The restaurant embodies a lot of what represents Chinese food in America. Early immigrant stories, building community support, and of course, good food. In today's episode, we will learn about the Lotus Room and the people behind them from the Fong and the Chin family. Hi, my name is Christy, and this is the American Chinese Food Show. I got my first menu at a thrift store in Puget Sound in Washington State about 10 years ago. I love that every element on a menu tells you something about that period. The logo is designed in the wonton font. It's largely considered offensive now to use it. Judging from the telephone number and the price, you can also tell the, the approximate date of the menu. This one is from the 1950s. Many of the old menus you can find online today were taken slash stolen by the customers as memorabilia. Sometimes you see these marks next to the menu item. It's usually marked by the customer so they remember what dishes they ordered. This one also has some handwritten corrections. Maybe people didn't like to have crisp noodles with egg for young. The Cantonese romanization is a struggle here. Cha siu is cha so. Fan ke yo. Then you have an English, and on the back, 24 versions of the family dinner. On the menu is printed by Peter Pan, the menu man, whoever he was. I absolutely love this menu. I instantly fell in love and from there began my Chinese American restaurant menu collection. The offering was definitely very sophisticated for Colorado back then. Who are the people behind the Lotus Room? Esther and Frank Fong started operating the dining room of the only Chinese-Japanese-American legion post in the country, Cathay Post 185, in Denver in 1945. Frank was the chef and Esther managed the staff, a very common practice even today. Frank got his career as a chef start in San Francisco where his father taught in a Chinese school. The couple met in San Francisco in 1945 when Esther was secretary to the president of the Bank of Canton. Esther, however, was a Colorado native with a rich family. Her father, Jimmy Chin, was coined the mayor of Chinatown in Denver. He was even part of a peace pledge between two tongs, the Bing Gong and Hop Sing, to not have tong wars like the slayings on the Pacific coast. He owned three different restaurants and once cooked for the Antlers Hotel in Colorado Springs. Esther's grandfather, Chin Lin Su, was a foreman of a gang of a thousand Chinese workers who helped complete the Union Pacific Railroad. He settled down in Colorado and became the first Chinese to reside in the state. His daughter, Lily, Esther Aunt, was the first native-born Chinese in Colorado in 1873. And Lily had a wild story too. She was the undisputed belle of Chinatown. Uh, probably wasn't too hard since there were only five Chinese women in Denver in the early 1900s. She married Lok Wing Yun, a wealthy importer that backed many gambling enterprises. When Lok died, the estate is said to be valued at nearly a half million dollars. 60 millions today. And consists of property in China, San Francisco, and Denver. Lily Lok inherited it and became one of the wealthiest Chinese women in the United States. Esther and Frank eventually opened their own restaurant at the Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 1 location in 1948. On the opening day, hundreds of flowers crowded the Lotus Room where they served all the exotic dishes they're famous for, like seaweed soup, Cantonese lobster, stuffed mushrooms, sweet and sour, and other delicacies. The Lotus Room was regularly featured in newspapers by column writers. One wrote, How? Chinese cooking here indeed is heaven come to earth. Frank became the go-to for Chinese eating customs. For example, he explained the Dragon Boat Festival and Zhong, Chinese tamales, out of the kitchen on plates. He brought the two steaming green bundles and set them before us. We unwrapped the green leaves of the bamboo recently brought from Canton. 
The restaurant was an integral part of the community. It was the favorite eatery for Japanese wedding parties and social functions. It provided jobs to local Chinese families. It was very well loved by the people of Denver. A blogger recorded, there was never a family birthday that wasn't celebrated here. Tasted for all the world like heaven on a plate to a procession of boomer kids and their parents. I am always taken with how many people my age that grew up here all have the same memory of eating at the Lotus Room. But it wasn't always that way. Denver is the place where one of the most painful anti-Chinese riots took place. It wasn't the largest in casualties, but it was significant for its timing because it broke out only two days before the presidential election in 1880, leading politicians to increasingly focus on Chinese immigration as a national issue. The Chinese Exclusion Act easily passed the House and the Senate two years after the riot. At one point, Denver's Chinatown was the largest in the interior west, with nearly a thousand residents. As the dad, Jimmy Chin, said in an interview, Chinatown is going. We're all getting older every year, and most of the younger generation has moved to California or somewhere else. There used to be jobs for Chinese in Denver. Chinatown was completely gone by the 1950s when buildings were demolished for development. As for the Lotus Room, Frank and Est's son Bob ran the Lotus Room after his parents retired. It closed in the early 1990s. Today, Denver has a vibrant Asian American community with many more Chinese restaurants, but to many, nothing compared to the Lotus Room. One person from the Facebook group West Side of Memories asked a while ago, Does anybody remember the lotus room in the vfw post they had the best chinese food i have never found another chinese restaurant as good as this place many fondly agreed best ever never found a better place it was always crowded and we never minded the wait that's it for today's episode if you like our content subscribe to the channel see you soon